Okay, so in this last tension review question, a part of this uh, three-part series, um, we're now trying to figure out what is the what are the tension forces exerted on the rope by the blocks when the rope has been mass has been reduced to 0 0.01 kg. So we're working from case one where the mass was uh, one kg, so quite a heavy rope, and um, to a much lighter rope, only 0 0.01 kgs. But the key thing between case one and case two is that the acceleration of the system is the same. So um, again, so even though, so then I guess the if I were trying to work out the forces on the two blocks, but I'm actually going to start with uh, block A. So if I think about block A, I think about the free body diagram for block A. There will be normal force on A by the table. Weight force on A by the earth, and there will be some sort of downward tension force on A by the rope. But I'm only considering the x component um, of this particular um, force. So the F net on A will be equal to the tension force on A by the rope in the x direction, which will be the mass of A times the acceleration of A. Again, from the previous two questions, we have um, included in, in a sense that we've stated that the accelerations in both cases are the same. So the tension force on A by the rope in the x direction is still the mass of A, so 5 kgs times the acceleration of the system. So this is still uh, 2.5 newtons. And um, that is the same as it was when we had the um, rope was uh, 1 kg, so if I go back to the answers from question 1, we stand down here, we determine that it, because the cases have the same acceleration and the tension force, the x component of the tension force is the only force responsible for accelerating, it was, in a sense, it results in it's equivalent to the net force on block A, it has the same mass and the same acceleration, the tension force on the rope. Uh, by block A will be the same in both cases, and that's sort of an important point to note. Um, so it's still equal to 2.5 newtons. Now, if we switch things up a little and think about the rope in this case, and then we can eventually move to uh, think about block B. Um, the rope has again has three forces. There will be a small weight force on the rope by the earth. There will be a tension force on the rope by block B, and there will be a tension force on the rope by block A. Again, I'm only considering the X components um, uh, of the forces. So the F net on the rope is going to be T or B in the X direction, when it's T or A in the X direction. And that would be equal to the mass of the rope times the acceleration of the rope. So I'm going to try to solve for the tension of the rope by block uh, B. T or B X will be mass of the rope times acceleration of the rope plus T or A the X, which we've solved for just up above. So T or B X, mass of the rope is quite small, 0 0.01 kgs times the acceleration that we previously determined, plus this 2.5 newtons. So the MA term of the, so the net force on the rope is quite small, because again it's a very small mass and a small acceleration of um, 0 0.005 newtons. Again, I'm sort of ignoring my sig figs here, um, just for uh, to, to drive home a an important point. So we have 2.505 newtons. So the the big so let, let me just sort of to finish out the question. This is how we determine. So this is the tension force again on the rope at block B. We could have determined this number also just by considering block B like I had done in question one, where we're pushing block B with 4.005 newtons. And then you have you could consider what does the net the net force on B stays the same. So what would the rope uh, have to, what tension force would the rope need to exert on B? 
or you can do it from the rope uh, scenario. But the important point here that, I want, that we want to sort of drive home is that back when the mass was quite large, uh, at 4.5 newtons, there was quite a significant difference between the tension on both sides of the rope. So the, the tension force on the right hand, the X component uh, on the right hand side was as big as 3 newtons, and the left side was only 2.5. So it was a 0.5 newton difference between the X components on either end of the rope. But keeping the acceleration the same, and sort of uh, we get down to case 2 now, and we made the uh, rope mass 0 0.01 kg is quite small. Again, keeping the acceleration the same, the tension force x component on block A doesn't change because it's the force that ends up being the net force on A. But be since because so because the mass of the, the rope is getting much smaller, the net force on the rope gets much smaller. So that reduces the size of the net force on the right hand side. And now you can begin to look at the differences between these two uh, forces. And I sort of want you to think about what would happen if we went to 0 0.001. Would these get bigger or some, again, keeping the acceleration the same in all cases? So what you hopefully would realize is that as, as the mass approaches zero, and we keep the acceleration the same in all cases, this force will stay at 2.5, but this one will get closer and closer and closer to 2.5. That in the limit that the mass goes to zero, when we end up with a massless rope, then the tension on both ends of the rope would be the same. Which is why we can state for a massless string is that the tension force is transmitted undiminished from one end to the other. But that is only holds true for massless ropes. But we can even see in the li in a situation where the mass is in, isn't zero but you know point zero one newtons the forces, tension forces on either end of the string are actually already getting quite close to each other. So if we make this go uh, to zero, what we'll find is that these will actually be the same. And that's what we make that statement, that the you can only state that the tension force is transmitted undiminished for mass of strings. It is not the same for, for strings that have mass.